2016 was the greatest year for music of all time. Hello, my name is James Acaster. I'm a comedian from the United Kingdom and I am the foremost authoritarian on the music of 2016. Is that, is that a phrase? I know all about the music of 2016 because I bought 567 albums from that year because I got obsessed with it when my whole life fell apart. But that's a story for another time. For now, this is a video where we're going to look at 16 overlooked perfect albums from 2016. Overlooked ones. There's loads of perfect albums in 2016 that everyone knows about. Black Star. I can't answer why. Lemonade. Oh, I like being walked all over lately. Walked all over lately. I'd rather be crazy. Blonde. Every day, shit. Drop a baby off at home before my night. Shit. No, I can't hear none of Spend the night. Shit. But these ones I'm about to talk about now, completely overlooked. By not just one or two people, by all of you. Starting off with Rocks and Waves Song Circle. Uh, it's unclear if this album is self-titled or if it's called Songs 1 to 5. A lot of the things about this album are unclear. It's a mystery. People don't really know much about it. Uh, all that the record labels know is that uh, a Swedish artist went to Mexico traveling and then just came back with this recording. The best approximation of what happened is that he was traveling, he bought three Zoom mics with him, uh, just walking around, he's going to record, make some field recordings, and then he went to a village where there's a choir singing in the square, and he went up to them and asked them all if they would record some of his original compositions. They went to a church, he positioned the three mics in the room, and they made this album. It kind of sounds like when like a choir covers like a Velvet Underground album. Fifteen, Anarchist Republic of Buzz, United Dictators of Europe. This is, uh, if you can't tell from the other, this is basically an experimental hip-hop album but fused like punk, free jazz, and all sorts of shit. And here's the thing, this is a real anti-EU album. And listen, I voted Remain, and I love it. It's absolutely, it, loads of Turkish instrumentation on it. The uh, Sebel Zin is the uh, mastermind behind it all. He's a French producer and uh, he got his collective together. And the first album, no Turkish instrumentation. The second album, loads of Turkish instrumentation because it's anti-EU and Turkey have got a turbulent history with the EU, so it's really sticking it to it. The front cover is people watching torture footage in cinema while framed by the stars of the EU. Fourteen, public speaking and his album Caress Redact. This is the project of Jason Anthony Harris, uh, a New York-based uh, musician who's a. Uh, used to do like loads of loops, loop pedal stuff, all looping sounds, and then he decided he didn't like that because it was accumulating sound all the time. He was having to go down the same route every single day with every single song. So he decided to instead go the opposite way, start removing sound from everything. And the reason he took away most of the sound is because it's meant to be a violent album. So he's taking stuff away as being an act of violence. A lot of the lyrics on this album are pretty, uh, if you really listen to them, pretty uncomfortable to listen to. There's lyrics about uh, brain damaged boxes, uh, Guantanamo Bay detainees, child brides, uh, mutilation. It's pretty full on. It's all pretty full on, but it's a very... Number 13, AV by Surface to Air Missive. This is a prog folk recorder rock album, as in um, album that mainly features the recorder. Taylor Ross is an extremely skilled recorder player. He plays a whole choir of recorders on this album, and yet it never sounds gimmicky. The first time I listened to it, I didn't even realize some of the songs were recorded. I thought they were like uh, manipulated, like stem sounds. It's got a very nostalgic feel to it, and he recorded all the instruments in his apartment when he lost his job and came out of a relationship at the same time. It's beautiful. Prog folk recorder rock. Twelve. 
folk souvenir by Joanna Gamila. This is loads of traditional Spanish songs sung in Catalan by Joanna Gamila. She wasn't really into um, like proper like old Spanish folk music. Got asked to do a performance and then got obsessed with it over the years, doing more and more live shows, getting into free jazz and improvisation within uh, traditional music as well, and taking the song and trying to like bring about its true essence rather than just sticking to it all the time. Uh, this album as well features loads of uh, field recordings that she had made throughout her life. She recorded her grandmother singing a lot when she was growing up and also she got a lot of, load of recordings from uh, Alan Lomax as well from, uh, from back in the day, back in the day in old Spanish times. Uh, I should have really researched when, but you know, it's from an important era. Si tu te fas la baia y a mi me vens chupant, yo me faré balana, balana, la, la mar. Number 11. Not good at spending time alone, aka cleanliness, by Market. Nate Mendelssohn is a musician, he studied jazz initially, jazz saxophonist, and then ended up making this like indie. Uh, solo indie rock album playing guitar and singing on it uh, so kind of going completely the other way to what a lot of like disciplined jazz musicians end up doing he's recorded this over a 10 year period he recorded it at the conservatory he, he, he worked at and then at his parents house and then at his own place in new york it maps like a really long like big chunk of his life loads of changes for him but for me this album it conjures up like the spirit stuff like Neutral Milk Hotel. I think it's very rare to find indie songs that can really like uh, bring out certain emotions in you the way that this one does. It makes you feel melancholic but also optimistic at the same time. Very special. <laughs> Number 10, Katie Day and her album, Flood Network. Katie Day is a musician based in Melbourne. She made this album completely in her bedroom uh, where she would like work for really intense periods of time and then do nothing for ages and then work really intensely again. Uh, there's a lot of like, she really pitched her vocals up uh, for the album and mixed the album on like broken headphones. So it sounds like really weird, all the mixing of it. Also she wanted, to, she wanted it to sound like you were traveling through something. But even though it all moves on from one to the other, it's not just one big chunk of stuff. There's a lot of different moods here. It's also the, the last album that she played guitar on. There's a lot of like, you know, electronic drums on it and a lot of synth noises. This is the last album where she did uh, actual acoustic guitar and stuff. It's also her very last album where she wasn't being like, um, as personal on it. On her new album, Solid Sisters, that came out this year, she's singing very openly about uh, being transgender and what that's meant for her in her life. This was the last album where she wasn't being open about any of that. So I think that's quite significant in her discography as well. Number nine, Araga Honzi, Hanad Suroto, I think. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. This band take traditional Japanese folk music, that kind of style, not the songs, but that style, and they fuse it with neo soul, funk, and jazz, stuff that you're not supposed to mix it with whatsoever, and it just creates such a new and vibrant, exciting sound. Songs are great. I don't think I've ever heard an album that sounds like this. Uh, if you have, you know, tweet loads of things or whatever. But like, it's real good. The mixing Japanese folk music with neo soul, funk, jazz, and even rock and indie at some points. What more do you want? Number eight. What Now by John Bapp. John Bapp. This album is like, first of all, it started life as just some drum tracks. Mike Mitchell is an amazing young drummer, traveled through Buffalo, stopped off at John Bapp's place, tracked a load of really frenetic, all over the place jazz drums, just tumbling jazz drums, all skitch and all over the place, then moved on. And then Bapp then wrote the songs around those, but so much of it is like, 
you know, there's no two instruments are really quite in time with one another. You've got like, you know, just Latin bass and just quite sloppy drums. And it backs amazing like R&B vocals. The first time I heard it, I thought it was like beef hearted and R&B, is what I felt like at the time. Like it's almost unlistenable to begin with, everything's all over the place, but the more you listen, the more it's just like all anchored in melody. And also there's another album that is linked, all the tracks are linked together by like, you know, field recordings and uh, spoken word, you know what I mean? Number seven, Karima Walker, Hands In Our Names. This came out in 2016 on cassette, and the following year was released on all formats. But my rule is, if it was initially released in 2016, it counts, otherwise it doesn't count. That's, that's my rule that I set myself for no reason. Karima Walker, originally a folk musician who then wanted to get more out of the, the genre. So this album is like a sound collage of loads of different, like, you know, there's a lot of tape noises on it and loads of ambient uh, noises and then you get lifted out of those swells into a nice folk passage like a gently picked guitar, her vocals are very delicate, very beautiful and then it will carry you into like another just repeated weird tape loop noise before you get brought back to another full song. Gather as the dust Lay and cross the desert Pillars of salt that turn to flee My eyes in turning to my brother My help does not come from thee Whew. At the time she recorded it, she had no fixed place of residence. She was traveling around a lot, and you really kind of get that out of the music, that this is like someone who's like quite restless at the time and not really settled, trying to settle down, trying to get the music itself to feel a bit still. But you always get that sense of like, of movement and things just flowing into one another. Number six, The Tuts, update your brain. The Tuts are a melodic punk band. There's loads of anger on here and righteous anger about uh, you know, politics and the class system in the UK and the music industry as a whole and relationships. They say they're gonna change the world. They care about ordinary fight. This system is jail. I mean, I'm baffled a lot of for all the albums on this list, I'm baffled that they're not plastics and that everyone isn't listening to them. But like, pick, listen to this, you know what, what, what's people's problem? Do you know what I mean? What's your problem, guys? Listen to it and get, very easy to get into. Put with good punk, authentic punk music. Number five, Mike Cooper, new guitar, old hat, new blues. Mike Cooper is like in his 70s or some shit. Over the years he's become very experimental, doing loads of like weird soundscapey stuff and whatever. And this album sees him like using actual proper just like normal acoustic guitar for the first time in years. It was all lap steel guy for ages, just all the sliding up and down and doing all that. Then he got an acoustic guitar, and he's still messing around with it. He's doing loads of weird, like, noisy loops and still playing it on his lap with different things. And he's singing over the top, really, like, heartfelt, earnest vocals, but all the lyrics are 
cut up lines from Thomas Pynchon novels and this was recorded live uh, in Switzerland, I believe. This is one gig, but you can't hear the audiences. You wouldn't know. It was this an improvised, like, noisescape album. Just tired man, far from your love. Tired man, far from your love. So snatched, maybe just left behind. So snatched, or maybe just left behind. So snatched, maybe just left behind. Number four. Bad Timing by The Super Swag Project. This album is a math rap odyssey. It's a chunky old album. Every single track hits. It's all these like weird time signature. There's like beats that really fuck with you. Like they deliberately, I like music that sometimes deliberately trolls you a bit and then do, doing annoying sounds on you. Stuff like that, you know, just prodding you a bit, needling you. Some good guest spots on this album as well. Youngster Gigi's on this album. Who's, uh, his album, Suey Rap, which I'm going to pop up there as well. Also a perfect album from 2016. Yeah, sure, I'm putting in two albums at this slot, but you know, they're related to each other. They're from the same collective of musicians. Uh, Yoko Gigi's album, way more aggressive and shouty and dark. Out of Sight by Fallin. You won't have heard of this band. Uh, they made this album and they split up immediately. They didn't do any promo for it at all. Uh, they got together, I think they formed when they were teenagers and they still, I think they were in like 18 or something when they made this album. But this sounds like a band that have been together for decades, making this career defining album they've had in them all along. If you like Slint, if you like Spiderland, uh, I'd recommend this album. It's got some very just long, dirty, guitar sounds like over and over again the same riff it's building and building with, with these like quiet vocals and quite suddenly burst a out of nowhere it plays on repetition but not in a way that gets into the skin and annoys you we go there's no reason for even doing this why do you keep repeating the same thing get a new idea that ain't what's happening they're completely locked into something for the right amount of time and then they carry you off into another thing just when you need it so dirty smart rock music. Number two, Kid by Mal DeVisa. It frustrates me that not more people got into this album. It got favourable re reviews when it came out. People were getting behind it, and then uh, not enough people. Sit in my room, holding myself accountable. I, I, if this is the end, I made myself breathless with all of my worthlessness. It's like, She's incredible. Most of this album is just her and a bass guitar. There's bass chords and these amazing vocals. She often cites Nina Simone as her main influence. You can hear that in there. It's an amazing voice for all of her songs. And then suddenly out of nowhere, you get like a hip hop track where you've got dirty, scuzzy beats and she's like being a lot, her vocals are more got more bite to them. And then you're into a nice, you know, reflective, forlorn ballad again for a while. A few of those tracks and then blah!
and number one. And by the way, these are in no particular order, any of these. These are all perfect. So they're all tens. Don't forget that. But number one is Pixfay by Pixfay. En mi tierra espera, en mi tierra espera, en mi tierra espera, en mi tierra espera, el eco de mi tambor, en mi tierra espera, el eco de mi tambor, en mi tierra espera, yo nací en tierra morena. Also, it's Awo by You Can Dance. The reason for that is because these are made by the same guy. Damien Cruzel is a guitarist from Leon, and he made two albums in 2016. Uh, one is Pixvay, which is like a, it's taking traditional South Colombian music and mixing it with like math rock. <laughs> And the other one is Awo, which is taking traditional Ethiopian music and mixing it with more, you know, like Black Sabbath kind of rock music. And there's, honestly, there's nothing that sounds like it. Yeah, okay, so I've like done two albums again, and technically, you know, this is 18 albums in 2016, but like, you know, they're all perfect. I didn't want to miss any of them out. And you know what? There's even more on top of this. There's way more overlooked perfect albums in 2016. I had to really bite my tongue not to, not to do 50 on this list. I'm not joking. This was originally a list of 50, and I had to get it down to 16, and even then, I chucked a couple more in and cheated and made sure it was 18, because it's very hard to not go on about the amount of good music in this year. And if you don't believe me, bang! UK viewers, you can buy this book. It's called Perfect Sound Whatever. It's about why 2016 is the greatest year for music of all time, and it's about why I think so, including the fact that I may or may not have had a breakdown. But... Just because I had a breakdown doesn't mean I'm not right. 2016. Thank you, Anthony, for hosting this video. Uh, if you don't already subscribe to the channel, make sure you subscribe down below. It's excellent. And if you already are a fan of The Needle Drop, hey, good news. I mentioned The Needle Drop in my brand new book, Perfect.